rap shit. Sergeant Smack make it backflip. Telly Hank it with the action. With the vital speaking Spanish. Frank Matthews, how I vanish. Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut. Go BBS is on a beamer. When fat cat with 10 queens up. Fall off the prop and I to re up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus. Uptown like I'm baby man. Just caught a touchdown from the bay. Call hip hop, you know what I'm saying? From the beginning, what we call thugness, from the beginning, what we call just, 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 just the empowerment, or even enslavement. I'm saying it's realer than us, you know what I'm saying? Just like Nino Brown said, this shit is bigger than me, this shit is bigger than us. So we just, hip hop is just grabs the apartment, you know what I'm saying? Because we a language, this is what I'm saying? We, we universal, this is universal language, you know what I'm saying? We go overseas and we go to we go to other countries and when people hear us, we don't go. I don't give a fuck how many texts you got in the project. You ain't get there because you had that hundred texts. You ain't get there because you had a hundred G's. You got there because you fucking fuck was hot and they wanted to that shit. You know what I'm saying? So it, it goes to show you the power of the mind created that fucking M16 that you talking the fuck about. If I fucking get a million dollars and I spend all my fucking money if I buy three six hundreds and I buy a fucking clip, I don't got shit no. Right. The nigga that owned the fucking Benz deal that got all my fucking money. Yeah. I'm just fucked yeah. talking shit. Right. You know now, what I'm saying? Now that brings us back to the album. This album you putting out independently. Yeah, I'm saying I'm, I'm not gonna say independently because that sound like when people hear independently, it sound like oh, oh, you know what I'm saying? You got a little bit of five, ten. You got more, 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 more. You know what I'm saying? We're going out here incredibly, you know what I'm saying? But we still doing our own thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, I'm saying, like you gotta say, you know what I'm saying? I'm like we sitting on our ass, drawing our fucking dumb. I'm for the fucking dumb. I'm not for the down for. I'm not here for no money. I'm not here to, you know what I'm saying, to crack nobody. I'm not here to crack nobody. Fuck all the niggas in the damn bitch. You put all them fucking chains. Fuck all that bullshit, son. Put all that shit away. What the fuck you own? Let's own the diamond. This one, nigga. Right. If you own a jewelry store, I'ma come and cop mad shit in here, nigga. I ain't right. copping no shit from none of these niggas that's making bombs and trying to kill my fucking babies. Right. Fuck y'all niggas. Yeah. And all y'all niggas with all that bullshit trying to make hip hop seem like it's all about that. Stick it up your ass, cause that's only where it's gonna end up. You hear crab ass niggas talking about Hitler and throwing subliminal shit. Act like that niggas gonna see it. Y'all see the fucking image of the dragon right in front of y'all motherfucking face. Y'all laughing at that shit. That's why y'all crab motherfuckers being sucked. Tell me about what happened there. Uh, I'm saying it's all good, you know what I'm saying? It's mad love for everybody on time record, you know what I'm saying? You think people for everybody on time record, you know what I'm saying? Everybody on time record, you know what I'm saying? Just happy. Like we caught a stumble from fucking, you know what I'm saying? I was fucking with the farm, real live niggas, AZ, Nas, Foxy. Steve style track masters, all them love, still give me love to this day. It's all fucking love, you know what I'm saying? Fucking with some crowd ass niggas that was trying to get millions, trying to get money and all that, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about the owners and the people that work there, you know what I'm saying? Doug down to Sam and Nori and them, that's my fucking people, they doing their fucking thing, you know what I'm saying? Everybody else, but it's just that we fucking with some crab ass presidents and some bullshit ass and um, I don't know what the fuck they was doing, you know what I'm saying? But it's, it's all good. So they weren't giving you what you wanted? Or you wasn't Giving them what they want to do. I already came to attention to what I wanted. You know what I'm saying? I'm bringing help and I make a better situation for them. They were just blind to the fact. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I don't fuck somebody gonna give me something and I'm hip hop. 
It wasn't before. Motherfucker, you want me? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker, you want us? You know what I'm saying? So you know what I'm saying? That's the meaning of keeping it real. And when I say keeping it real, I mean now it's about time to keep it fucking thorough. Keep it thorough, you gotta keep it cool. You know what I'm saying? We already made it to the new millennium or whatever the fuck we think is the new millennium. Which ain't nothing new under the sun and definitely ain't nothing new over the fucking sun. You know what I'm saying? Right, we've been speaking on a lot of terms and you seem like it's very enlightened, brother. What you think this term that we're throwing around now, one? One, when I say one, see, I take it back to what? When somebody say one, it was far as I know, when they say one, that's telling you to fucking do the knowledge. And that means to look this and observe and respect all the way. You know what I'm saying? 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 You
But this group I'm speaking of, and I'm also going to say they're probably, to me, the most lyrical group, super group, however you want to put it, in hip-hop history. And that group is going to be the firm that will be led by Queensbridge legend Nas and consisted of Foxy Brown, AZ, Cormega, Nature, and the guy that I'm covering today that would star under the name Half a Mill. Now, in a channel that consists of telling stories about gangsters and wild stories, I really want to say that this one kind of falls up under two. One, like I said earlier, just a person that I feel some of y'all should know. And two, probably most importantly, just a sad story of potential unfulfilled. Now, based on my research on the limited information that I got from him, it looks like he was born and grew up in Brooklyn. And towards the end of his life, where he looked like he was fighting for hip hop fame, he would spend a lot of his time in the Albany projects. Now, it's hard to exactly say when I first heard Half a Mill, but when it really kind of started to kick in on me, he would do a lot of guest featurings with AZ. And if you haven't heard him, one of the songs that I would recommend you to go listen to would be Quiet Money with him featuring AZ because that kind of, to me, gives an in-depth picture of his style. You could also go check or probably heard the song Some Niggas That Something is telling me was on the Belly soundtrack, but I could be wrong. But it's kind of so sad that the highlight of his career would come, I think, in 1997 when he would be featured on the last song of The Firm's only album, a song titled Throw Your Guns. Now, honestly, the first thing that kind of perked my ears up about Half a Mill was during those days, I always considered AZ and even to this day. I considered him one of the more lyrical rappers that I would say I ever heard. Definitely compared to Nas. It was one time that I kind of would say it was A1, AB. When very in the early on stages, you can listen to Life's a Bitch and kind of see how closely the styles mirror. And when I heard Half a Mill right next to AZ, and it sounds like, uh, how could I say this? It sounds like as sometimes he even made a Z style sound old. And this was back then to me. So that was really, really mind blowing. Because to me, a Z was always and will always be like a pre-injury Clay Thompson with just the smooth shot. It's like that shit gonna, it's just classic hip hop that shit gonna fly in any era at any time. So for somebody to sound above and beyond that to me, it was just crazy. And I always look for somebody trying to outshine the legend. So for instance, it's a few DJ Clue tapes or freestyles that I would hear Nature and Nas. And not to say that Nature is a better artist or a better rapper than Nas, but it's just like he got Nas on that song. I even want to say I heard Lord Tariq get Biggie on a song one time. And that's just my personal opinion. A lot of people are going to be like, that's crazy. But uh, I need to find that song and listen to it now. But at that time, I thought about that. And I, it's certain people that I just never heard washed on a song. And y'all get in the comment box. I know some people going to say Jay-Z, but some people going to say Eminem did him dirty on Renegade. So that's definitely another topic of conversation. But I'm eager to see what y'all got to say and just thinking on my head i'm like people probably gonna say wayne or but yeah y'all get in the comment box with that but yeah that was the first thing in half a mil's limited career that kind of let me get a glimpse of the potential that this artist could possibly have during his brief career you would hear him paired up with another underrated artist a lot a guy by the name of ali vegas after appearing on the Firm's album, that would be a way that he would use to keep his name hot. And he would drop the first of his two albums on May 9th, 2000. That would sell about 50,000 copies independently. And it would even chart on the R&B and hip hop charts at 91. So to be doing that in 2000, I'm assuming that he saw a nice chunk of change on that, he would follow up 
with another album two years later on July 30th, 2002, titled The Hustle Don't Stop. I'm not sure if that one did as well as the Million album, as I can't really find numbers or where that one charted at. But throughout his career, he really never got that push. And this was in a time in the game where it was only a limited amount of rappers being kind of pushed to the public. Or should I say they have forefront rappers, then they have some kind of people in the background or people that we would consider underground today. And he really wouldn't get a chance to live his potential out. And you could kind of see this in a 2010 documentary that a film director by the name of Maggie Hagley West would shoot on Half a Mill's life, almost like a video biography titled A Player Hating Love Story. You could even check it out on YouTube. And it kind of details his life and shows really some of the trials and tribulations that he was dealing with. And it's, it's really just sad. Has one scene in the documentary where the filmmaker is with several people outside what looks like the corner store and the topic of life insurance comes up and they all state that they have life insurance and they range between the ages of 20 and 25. And in a documentary, Half even talks about how hard his life was. Another song I will probably reference listening to was Go On by him. And he would talk about how at the age of five, his father, who he's saying was addicted to heroin, left him in the middle of Harlem. And he would wind up taking the A train back to Brooklyn at the age of five. So this is just, it's like crazy. You could only imagine besides what happened because towards the end of the documentary, it's just like people in his crew just start dying off. It's like his cousin get killed by another crew member. Uh, one of his close associates, a guy by the name of DJ Ali would die by a heart attack. So it's like just death was seemingly surrounding him at this point in time. And it just seemed like it continued to plague him because he would only live a little over a decade from when that documentary was, I guess, being shot. I kind of just got wind of it, so I'm not sure exactly when it was released. But he would be found by NYPD on October 22nd, 2003. I vaguely remember at the time of his death, he would rap about a lot of controversial things. One being Illuminati and watching the documentary, he really was pushing the limit on how musicians should own the art and almost like pretty much saying never sell your masters and talk about how other people were eating on the culture more than the artists. So it's sad that he was not able to see a time like right now where you can almost independently. But even in the story, this tragic, you can find the silver lining as his son, who has the same namesake as him, Jason Warlord Jr., would go on to star in the BMF show as Dink, almost seeing his father's vision through in a different realm. And that felt good because I remember scenes in a documentary where he was in this project apartment with what looks like gold and platinum albums just hanging on a dresser. So... I definitely want to take this time to say salute to half a mil. We miss our legends. If y'all didn't know about him, I'm glad that I can tell y'all about him. If y'all knew about him, y'all get in the comment box. Y'all dropped the Ellis Ball where y'all first heard about him. Kind of all of that. Y'all make sure y'all hit the red subscribe button and the bell right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box. Y'all run it up. Y'all let me know what cities I need to go to, what stories I need to tell, what I missed, what I got wrong. All of that tapping directly, Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And y'all know the rundown. Till the next time, salute the almighty mob.